interesting. I'm like, oh. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking about the export uh, project. So we have the export project that you have saved, and we have the share project uh, that is also saved to your, your stuff. So I wanted to make sure that you knew that. And we are ready to go on to the next activity. If you all like uh, how we're moving along, I will move along this way and we can continue how we're doing. Good morning. Just to be sure, you save the or you save the project as an XML file on your local machine, and then you import it. You drag it into the script area. So that's a great question. So yes, you can do it that way, um, or you can, if you wanted to, you could also click your um, your little file folder here, and you could import, and then it would take you. Um, to let's see here's my downloads and I could import I could click on this and I could click open and it would import it for me we're, yeah we didn't see where your files were when you clicked on import but I'm um, assuming so it just took my you to file is just my file was in the download so when I clicked import it's in my downloads um, I'm on a Mac today so that's why it looks a little different but it is in my downloads so wherever you send your downloads to, is where it would live. So if you assigned it a different location to send your downloads to, that's where it would be. And you would have to go to that to get it. Um, and then once you're in your downloads file, you drag it into this into the um, you can, area? You, yeah, you can drag it or you can, um, not letting me move it. Or not letting me move my downloads file. Um, yeah, we're you not can... we're not seeing that, by the way. Yeah, you're we're sharing just your tab. Um, got you, got you, got you, got you. Um, let me see. Let me do a full share. And you got to share your whole screen, right? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. I think you got to unshare and then reshare your whole screen. So I am. I'm here. So you, you see everybody here. Uh, you see my whole screen now. If you do a export uh, or import, you're going to click import, and then uh, you'll see my um, my import comes up. You can click it and drag it in here, or you can just you know click on it and click open, just like you would any file. And it did just open this. I have a question. Is it bringing, um, oh yeah, it did, your draw square. Well, you've already got draw square in your browser. Hang on. So if a kid creates draw squares with plural, it's going to bring all the files, not files, but all the commands with it. Okay. So I'm going to just open up a snap. I'm going to make sure I'm logged out, log out. So I'm not, I'm not even logged in. Okay, I'm going mm -hmm. to import a file. I'll just, uh, I'm going to drag it down in here. Well, it may not have, did it click it? No, it didn't. I'll click open. Okay, and so now I've imported it. It's not, I'm not signed in. This is a brand new thing, and it imported this code. Did it put draw square down in the menus or if you were going to use it, you'd have yep. to create. Nope. It's okay. Right in the menu. okay. Okay. Now I'm going to get rid of a lot of that extra stuff here. So when I um, click on that program in my documents or in my downloads, it opens up in edge. I mean, does that matter or do I have my settings set wrong? No. No, you don't. Um, so so with when you open the file, if you're just going to open the file, let me go and just get my finder here. So um So don't do that, just import it. Don't open up the file directly, is what you, you're doing. You can open the file directly. I want you to see what it looks like when you do. Um this is what it looks like on my Mac. It gives me the XML file. So it'll open up in the, like a little notepad or something like that. And it's just going to give you the XML. 
Okay, so it's okay that it's opening up in Edge. It doesn't really matter what program it opens up in. It does better in uh, in Google, in Chrome. Oh, I, yeah, I just don't know how to make it that happen. Okay, um, I guess that's something I so can just work. just it just open up. Okay, so here's the other thing you can do: have your Chrome open. Mm -hmm. Okay, have your Snap. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got my Snap open. It's empty. I don't, it's, I'm not logged in. Right. And then let me make sure. Okay. So I have my little XML file right here. Right. Just take it and drag it into your Chrome. Yeah. Okay. That works for me. Um, I don't know which XML file that was because this was not the one with the font. <laughs> oh, that was my recent. Hang on a second. I want to, I want to do this last one. Hang on. And I, th I think the, pro the problem you're encountering, Tracy, is to do with the fact that um, within, I'm guessing you're using Windows, within Windows, uh, every file extension has a default app to deal with it. And I would imagine that the XML, the XML extension currently is set to Edge. In fact, Ma Microsoft sets everything to Edge. You have to go in and turn it all off. Okay. Um, but uh, what uh, Marnie is suggesting, which is just dragging and dropping the XML straight into Chrome works perfectly well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me go ahead and get this smaller because otherwise it's going to get cluttered with things and I don't want you to have to see 25 million things on my screen. All right. So now we're into just uh, doing an introduce yourself activity. And this was based on me um, back when I was still dyeing my hair. So that's my emoji from then. I'm not dyeing my hair now. It's all half and half now. Anyway, uh, so the goals for this is that we're going to create a little um, kind of a storyboard kind of thing and uh, work on that. This is an interactive narrative. Um, Chris is not my husband's name they were trying to do the code and they thought his name was chris i was like i don't know where you got that but anyway um so uh this this is our goal this is what we're going to do we're going to do this interactive narrative there should be some code that goes along with this so this is some starter code that i have created for you and um well, I haven't created all of this. This was code that was half and half my work and half and half somebody else's. And you'll want to, um, once you once you open the, the code, um, this is what it's going to look like. And there's the two arrows at the top, and you can click those two arrows, and it'll bring you in to, to the code that we're going to be working in. This code is broken. We're going to be working through that, okay? Um, it's already running. It says, what's your name? You can go in and say, I use Bob for everything. So go ahead and run the code and see what it does. Have you shared the code with us? Oh, it is in, I'm sorry, it was in the, um, I'll put it in the. Oh, oh, okay. That's. Right. I'll put it in the uh, chat. That's 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 a great, great question. I just put the code in the chat. And it did say to go ahead and get signed in once you have the starter code. So let's go ahead and make sure you get logged in. I'm going to do that too. Okay, and if you want the, them to run, it's going to do the greet user and all that stuff. So go ahead and run your code, check it out, see what it does. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I think I'm running behind. Where do you put it? Put in your name, like to change the name. When you when you click the green flag. Uh huh. 
It's going to ask you hi, um, and then it's going to have a box underneath. Okay. All right. And you can type Thank in you. your name. Again, this code is broken, so don't don't be surprised. It's broken. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you want to go ahead and save this in your stuff. So remember how we did the save, do the file, and you'll want to do um, go ahead and open up the save as. You could probably do save, but um, once you click the uh, the save button, it should give you the uh, new project project name, especially if you do a share, okay? But save this to your computer so you have introduced in your computer. All right, now we're gonna get ready to go. We're gonna move forward. <clears throat> so we've got the starter code and we've, we've played with it, right? It says you'll notice that we already have a lot of code and sprites in the environment. So we have three three um, sprites in the environment. We have code, uh, we have the stage, and you can set up code for your students. And you'll notice when we get into curriculum, there will be starter code. Okay, and it says click on the Katie sprite to begin. So go ahead and click on Katie. My daughter's name is Katie. She doesn't live in North Carolina anymore. <clears throat> okay, so you see how Katie's code is written out. And if you're looking at it, you can kind of read it. So when the green flag is clicked, she's hidden. Um, and when I receive Katie up here, she comes onto the screen and she goes to uh, the XY, that XY location. And then when I want to Katie to go away, uh, I've got the glide three seconds and then Katie goes off screen and disappears. We good? I'm gonna move on to the next one. This one's gonna take a little bit more. We're gonna go to Chris uh, and we are going to look at his code. And he should have very similar behavior to Katie. All right. So very similar codes to, to Katie. It looks like there's a Parsons problem available for you. So it looks like the code is already there for you. You just have to click it into place. So we can go back and look at Katie's code. And you can click between the two sprites, right? Go ahead and get those clicked together. This is another great way to, um, if your students are new to programming, um, this is a great way to differentiate your programming with your students. You can give them these blocks of code and then they can say, okay, I just have to figure it out from this spot, not from all of the palette, which can sometimes be a bit overwhelming. So let's see if you guys got it. <clears throat> and this is for the Chris code. So when the green flag is clicked, you should have hide. And then when I receive uh, Chris appear, it's going to go to X0, Y negative 50. And we're going to show. And then to uh, disappear, we're going to glide uh, for three seconds uh, to X100, Y0 and then we're gonna hide. All 
right? Save your code. Marty, would you would you save this under a different name or would this still be introduce yourself begin? Introduce yourself begin would be fine. If you wanted to save it under a different name, you could just like add your your name to it, introduce yourself and then put like Mike and then you could save it that way. Um, but it's up to you. It won't matter because it'll save under your project with your name and not it won't save under my name. So when you code this one and you save it, it's saving to your stuff. <laughs> so now we're going to look at um, Mrs. Hill's worked example and um, We've got click on the Sprite Morning, click on the green flag to run, and then type in your name when it asked, and then click the yellow pause button when she asks you to press up. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Click on the green flag. Uh -huh. Wait a second, I have to stop it and start over again. There we go. I'm not going to make any changes to this code because if I make changes to this code, it will break what uh, we've got going on. So when it said press the up arrow, it said press pause. And so now the code is paused. Okay, let's see why they wanted to, st to stop the code. Um, so it says uh, click on the Marty Sprite and then right click on the guest, uh, the greet user block. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the greet user. If you see something and it looks like something that's been created by something, somebody else, you can right click and whenever it says edit, you know this is a block that has been created outside of the programming language. If you were to click on the save block and right click, you would not see that edit button. Um, you would just, it, it's code that is uh, part of the programming language. But we have greet user here and we can, um, we can take a look at this. And that's what it wants you to do. So I want you to get into the block editor. And it says, read through the code line by line and figure out how it works with your partner. So we've got go to X, Y. And so we've got the um, Marnie Sprite or the Mrs. Hill Sprite is clicked. And so this is what Mrs. the Mrs. Hill Sprite is going to be doing. Um, it's going to go to XY, which we said was in the middle. It's going to switch the costume. Um, it's going to say something. It's going to ask something. And it's going to say some stuff back. Sorry. I was going to scroll down in here. So just familiarize yourself with that. Is there anything that you don't understand in this that we need to cover? Or any questions you have about this? Okay. All right. So um, it said, let's look into talk about family block. So now we're going to go into um, the talk about family block and let's take a look at that. So we can cancel this one. We can go right in here and let's look at talk about family. And how do we know when um, the code is talking about Katie and the code is talking about 
Chris. And the broadcast block. Mm -hmm. The broadcast blocks. So we have uh, broadcast Katie up here, broadcast Katie disappear. When we broadcast, we're broadcasting to the entire code. We're not just telling one little thing to do something. So you can use tell instead of broadcast, but broadcast just shouts it out to it, the entire the entire program. All right. Um, so now we're going to do our step four, fix a bug in the guessing game. And we have done the, uh, it says unpause it by clicking the pause button again and try to guess how many years she's been teaching. Um, you'll notice the logic in Mrs. Hill's feedback for your guess seems to be reversed. Okay, so the answer is seven. But what are you getting when you run the code? I think it's the- You're putting in less than seven. It's showing you that it's too high. and should be too low, right? Yes. Yes. So we've got the code. We've figured out the code is broken somewhere. It's always saying too high. So where, um, where is that? Let's see. We've got the guessing game. Press the down arrow. It's in guessing game. Yeah, it's got to be in guessing game. Let's open that up and take a look. And why is the problem? Where is the problem? We're looking at the logic. Is it the repeat block? So we're repeating until the answer is seven. Oh, is the, is the ask block in the wrong place? Ah, maybe. Maybe. Is there a greater than or <coughs> equals? Is there a greater than or equals or just a greater than and less than? So that's a good question. Um, I'm going to say there is. Um, if you right click and you click relabel, you'll get all your stuff. Okay, so flip the flip the um, less thans, less than and make it greater than. For which one? That one. Your mouse is on it right now. This one? Yeah. Okay, and I can just relabel it and yep. make it greater than? Um, yeah. And then the other one's got to go the other way. And this or is or you could have just changed your um, high to low and low to high, which is what I did, because I couldn't figure out how to change the block. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, um, so relabel. And then that one needs to be too low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So you can use relabel. Like I said, okay. right click is your friend. Always right click and see what it does because they give us new things and it's amazing. And you're like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. Um, so you can do it that way. Uh, and the, the other way, the other thing I did like it that I heard was this ask block is right here. Now, if I were to have the ask block on the outside of the code. So what happens is when um, when it goes into the code, it's it's looking for an answer, but it there's no answer yet, right? So there is uh, the you you could uh, go in and just duplicate this block here and put um, an ask first, so that it is checking the answer first before it even goes before it goes in. Because if it doesn't check, if it doesn't check the answer, it's going to say too low or too high, or it's not going to say anything. And it'll ask it twice. So this might, this might be good. 
So Remind me not is, to save this. <laughs> the, the answer block is So we can test to... it. Go ahead and test it. See how it works. Does it work the same way if you do the up arrow? So when the up arrow is pressed, guess how long I've been teaching? If I type in seven. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that scared me. <laughs> I did too. I, I, I didn't realize. <laughs> it so, happened. So Marnie, I I I broke my editor. Um, I've now it just says when the flag is clicked, and then it's got the purple button that says hide. And then when I say when I when it says the hat one says when I receive Katie's appear, uh, it it all goes away, and then it just says show. <laughs> and I don't know how to get back to my details where all my stuff. Okay, so are you? There you go. That's the view I'm on right there. How did I get there? And how do I unget there? Okay, so I have, I'm clicked on Katie. You see here, this is Katie. This is Chris. Oh, that's and this good. is Marnie. Oh, and this is the stage. Okay. State. Oh, oh, oh right. I forgot the sprite business. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I don't think I can even jump like that, but there we are. Who, who were we editing initially? We were editing um, Guessing Game under Katie. I mean, under Marnie. Under Marnie. Okay, there we go. All right, makes more sense now. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> no, stop. Jeez, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but we can I can't find turn the, the volume on. I can't hear we you. Can, we can find the sound for that, and we can turn the sound off. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I, I'll let's go take a look at what the sound is. Where is the sound? It's, so it's like sound. <laughs> Taking the sound out. <laughs> Where's the sound? It says play sound. Hey. Uh, you can just yeah, pull it's sound. It's a pink block. <laughs> you can pull sound out there and. <laughs> And click OK, and then go away. Then it won't do. Hey, Marty, can you go back to the edit uh, again? Mm -hmm. We were just looking at the guessing game. Um, so. Oh, sorry. Okay. When it talks about answer, repeat until answer. Answer is tied to the ask block. Yes. And every time you update your answer, it gets rid of the old answer and puts in your new input. So by asking the question before I go into the repeat block, it's going to check that to see if I got it right before I go in. Let me show you what will happen if, um, if I don't have this ask here, right? This ask was not here before. Um, so I pulled it out and I'm going to go ahead and apply it and let's go ahead and do a run, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I have to clear my answer. Um, there we go. All right. So guess how long I've been teaching. It's going to, well, I'm sorry. Hang on. So I do the up arrow, guess how long I've been teaching. Um, no, I got to clear it. Hang on. It's only the first time you run it. It's that first time that you run it that it causes the problem. Most of your people won't see that it, and most of your students won't see that it's a problem. But what it does is it holds that answer from the last thing. So unless you do the ask um, outside of the block, it's going to see whatever answer you gave before. So this may have been Bob. Bob may have been the last thing that I entered and it'll be checking for Bob. And um, it'll go into it. Again, it probably wouldn't break the code 
if you didn't have the ask before, but it might break code in different ways in different projects if you don't have the ask. Oh, that happens in Java. When mm -hmm. you go from string, when you're asking about, when you're taking input from string to um, integer, and then you go back to string, it gets stuck. You have to clear it. It's like a manual clear. It's weird. Yeah. But this is Xcode, isn't it? Underneath? Whatever. Never this mind. Is, uh, I think it's JavaScript underneath. I don't know. Okay. All right. I, I can give you the I can get you the GitHub if you want. The source code for this, if you want, is under the snap. You can go here and you can download the source um, the source code. But there's also a reference manual and there's also a little bit of an about here. But we'll get into that with our other PD stuff. All right, so that's one way of getting in and correcting that particular um, part. Okay. Change this already. They didn't put the ask in front, but I've had problems by not putting the ask in front. So anytime I have an answer as I'm coming into a um, into a loop, I will put uh, an ask. If I'm using just the answer block, I'll put the ask on the outside as well. It just stops problems from happening. <clears throat> All right. So if answer is less than seven, Mrs. Hill will say it should say too low. And if the answer is greater, then it should say too high. And we figured out that code and what that code looks like. You'll see um you'll see a shift. Um they shifted the answer and the um the value they they shifted this right here. You can do it in different solutions, however you like. Again, you don't have to put that axe block on the outside of it because it will not hit seven. Um, But I, I prefer, I like the ask block before the repeat. But you have to put another ask block inside. So you have to remember to do those things. All right. So we've got um, computational thinking that we've been doing in this code. We looked through, we saw the logic, um, we figured out the problem. And we should be ready to go. And um, we've got uh, taking a look again at our pattern uh, recognition, our abstraction, our decomposition, and our algorithms. These are all things that your students should be familiar with, these words. Um, they will come across them in the AP. There you go. All right, so now we're going to modify age and days. And we're going to be working, it looks like we're working at, uh, Marnie is still talking, so we can go there. And we are going to be looking at the um, custom block that handles the say kids age. All right, so let's go ahead and find our custom block that does the say kids age. I'm I'm clicked on Marnie. I see it right here. The other place uh, that you would be able to see it is in your sensing. It's that lighter blue color, and you go at the bottom, and there's say kids age there. So let's right click and let's look at our code and kind of edit our code. Okay, how old are you? Age and day, time, answer times 365. 
So you can click on, it's the down arrow, click on the down arrow. Uh oh, I thought I did the down arrow. Uh oh. Let me stop. Click the down arrow. Okay. So I stopped it and I started back. It says, How old are you? Um, I'm going to be 25 again. And it tells me how many days I've been alive. Oh, yours says months. Oh. What if we want to say, oh, okay, yeah. Instead of saying age and days, say months. How would we do it? Oh, yeah, let's go do that. How would we do that? Look at the code. Right click. What would we want to change this to? 12, 12. Mm -hmm. So you change that 365 to 12. And then you would probably want to say change days. Would we have to change the variable? Age and days? No. That's right. We don't it have to know. change the variable. But it would be a little confusing if we didn't. So did your code say age and months? And then you were timesing it times 12, or was it always 365? It was, it always did the age and days. Um, yeah, and but so, something said months. Yeah, so when, we got, when, we go, when we're going here, modify your age. Oh, uh -huh. one, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so we're modifying the code to say instead of uh, days, we're modifying it to say months. Oh, we are? Yeah. Oh, okay. So this right here, um, I think Trey said this would be 12, where the 365 is. And then we'd have to change this to day, uh, to months. And you mentioned that we didn't have to change the name of the variable, and we do not. Why would it be good to change the name of the variable? Descriptive variables. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your variables descriptive and to know exactly what they are. And if we don't change the variable to create a, um, a variable that is age in months, then when we use the code and we want to go read through it, we're assuming that it's age in days when it's actually age in months. So changing the variable and making a new variable um, would be good here. And to make that new variable, you could click, you come to variables and you do make a variable. Create the variables, set the variable to whatever answer. So this, this would then, you would be able to do that here. It's a recommendation. It is not a necessity. So you is can it create, doing, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. You can create a new age and months variable. Mm -hmm, sure. And then instead of in the script, instead of age and days, you would put in age and months mm -hmm. and you'd multiply instead of by 365, you multiply by 12 and then where it says age and days, you would put in age and months. Correct. It would look like that. Oh, no, it wouldn't because I got to put months right here. So I lost my variables. When I go to the variables um, menu, yeah. my variables are all gone now. They should be at the top. What did I just do? Yeah, it, they're gone. They're gone? Um, yeah, it just, it's like it starts it set to zero. It's, uh, so my age in days is gone, and my age in months is gone. But then when I go to the set, uh, when down arrow is pressed. 
click your um, find blocks and type in age. Yeah, it's just got say kids age blue in motion. Mm, it does. Okay, are you and you are in your. That's interesting. Are they at the bottom? Uh, let me see if I lost it. Edit. You can write. No, it says. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You can um, uh, command Z or uh, control Z should undo. Yeah, but it's showing up when I hit block editor for the kids age. Uh, for the say kids age. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. It's showing there, but it's not showing in my. Um, over here in my make block in my uh, menu. Very weird. Because we're setting it inside the block, we have made it an implicit parameter inside the block, and so it can't oh. see it outside the block. So it's local. Mm -hmm. To there. Okay, so if I want that age to come out. You can, you can I get need to a redefine set. it. If you pull set out here, uh -huh. and, um, you you would have to yeah define it out there, and you pull your set okay. and then you put it here, and All then right. you should be able to see. That's okay. All right, let's make a variable. But because we set it in here, and I didn't set it out here, uh huh, it made it in uh, a local variable. And you all do not worry. We will be talking about local variables and global variables when we get there. It is. Stuff. Okay. So how's now? I'm gonna know. Edit. How does it know? It doesn't know which age and months I'm using. It doesn't. All right. We're just gonna go away. Once you set it outside, it should be able to pick it up on the inside. I should have named it differently so that I can actually tell if it's working. <laughs> yeah. Um, Names rookie, are fixed. Rookie mistake. Yeah. But the, your variables are going to be where you're going to have a lot of your problems. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, how are we doing? Are we good? <laughs> so we talked about how to modify those age and days uh, to age, age and months. Okay, and we have our variable. And when we have a variable that we set and we create, it's not like answer. Okay, answer will always be the one that every time a question is answered, uh, the answer will take in that next question. So even if I'm asking a question somewhere else in the code, it's going to pick that up. And so that's sometimes why we want to um, set our um, variables to whatever the input is. We'll want to go ahead and set a variable. So we talked about okay. making that variable. And you notice when you make a variable, it's going to show up at the top of your stage when you're running your code. Um, and that is because you have a checkbox. Um, and you can uncheck it so it does not show. Otherwise, when it's checked, it will show. And it looks like this is what we talked about doing. We replaced the 365 with 12, and we replaced the age and days with age and months, and we um, changed the days to months in the join. How do you clear the screen? Uh, I've got um, age and months. You've been alive for over zero months on my screen, how do you s clear it so that when you click on the went down arrow key pressed, you start all over again? Okay, so um, let's see. How old are you? Let me get it started again. Can I? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna click on something else. Okay, I've got the number guessing game. Okay. So I've got the number guessing game, and if I click the down arrow, no, it's not gonna let me go. I'm gonna stop it and then I'll click click your stop button and then click your down arrow. See if that does if that works for you. That's really how long I've been. 648 months. There we go. Did that work for you, Michael? Just click the stop button and then click the down arrow and it should, should work. See. Click okay. the stop arrow. The stop okay, button. The stop button. Right. Mm -hmm. Click the down arrow, and it should ask you how old you are. Okay, let's see. Yes, good. So the slides that, that we have here, they're very detailed, and they're very step-by-step. -step. So you can kind of go back through them and uh, take a look at them if you get stuck on something in particular. All right, so we're step five, modify day to two days, and we're gonna run our code to see what happens. Um, does Mrs. Hill uh, say kids age in month now? Um, we, we fix that. And it said even a small modification to the code can produce different results, right? We don't know what the say kids age is because it's abstract and it's inside. So we have to open it up and look, uh, look at what's inside. But uh, like someone else was saying, do you have to open up the, uh, open up the, uh, the hood of the car and see how the engine's working before you drive the car? Um, I mean, sometimes you do because your car is broken, but sometimes, you know, most of the time you get in your car and you just drive it. You're not, you don't care what's inside the engine to get it going. Okay, I take that back. Some people care what's inside the engine. I think Tony cares a lot what's inside the engine. You build cars, right? Um, so, um, but that's that abstraction piece that you're looking at. You want it to kind of stay hidden because it helps us to uh, keep our code easier to read. Save your code. All right, and now we're going to do uh, behavior on the stage. Um, and you'll uh, when you click on the stage, you'll see the blocks where it says the flag. When flag is clicked, switch your costume to brick wall. Uh, and when the space bar is clicked, switch your costume to the bedroom. And when the up arrow is pressed, switch your costume to the classroom. When the down arrow is pressed, switch your costume to the pathway. Where are our costumes? Let's go ahead and click our stage. If you want to, you can look at your backgrounds. There's tabs here, scripts, backgrounds, and sounds. If you click on the, the backgrounds, you'll see you have brick wall, bedroom, classroom, and pathway. It says when flag is clicked, switch the costume block to the brick wall. So can somebody tell me where the uh, when flag is clicked block would be? Control. Mm -hmm. Good. The control. The control. Yep. I'm checking my chat. I see. I see it. other people are working in the chat. So, so when the green flag is clicked, switch costume. Where would costume be? Looks. Got mo looks. Somebody said looks. Okay. Um. All right. Let's take a look at. We want to switch our costume. So it looks like this first one. Switch our costume. All right. So now we are looking at that. We've got our switch our costume to what? It said to brick wall. So we don't have to go create those. Our backgrounds are already in there. So now we're going to do that. And it said when the space bar is pressed, switch it to the bedroom. 
Okay, so if the green flag is under control, then I bet the space bar is under the control thing too. Now, this right here has got a drop down arrow, so there's multiple things in here that you can choose from. All right, so you're going to use this block for the rest of these things. So go ahead and get those set up when the space bar is pressed. And here's the cool thing. You can duplicate this whole thing. So if you duplicate the whole thing, instead of space bar, I can do my uh, up arrow and I'm going to my classroom, right? So I don't have to keep pulling the blocks in and out. It's fine if you do, um, but you don't have to. Oh, I just duplicated one, so that's my fault. And so go ahead and test those things and what do they do? If I do the space bar, if I do the up arrow, if I do the down arrow, it changes the, the rooms I'm in, okay? So go ahead and set those up based on what the comments have asked you to. Okay, and if we are good to go, we can move forward. We are likely going to have to save our code. Nope. Well, yes, I would save our code. <laughs> save your code. Save your code. So you're going to do your file. You can do an export summary, or you can share um, or just save your project. It's okay to just save your project to your um, screen um, once you've completed it. You can just click Save or Save As. I'm not going to do that because if I do that, that will change the code that you were given. Okay. So we've, we've finished uh, activity one and activity two for this first section. Is there any questions? Okay, so we learned how to use the interface and work with the interface. We learned how to read and edit and make code. We learned how to create custom blocks and edit custom blocks. Actually, I don't know if we've learned how, well, we did, we did draw square. And we learned how to make and use variables. Everybody good? Let's do a quick break. Shall we do five minutes again? All right. Tony, I'm setting the timer. We'll come back in five minutes.
section two, we're going to create some fireworks here. I have been talking again with my mute off or on. I put the um, I put the section two slides in, and what we're going to be doing uh, now is we're going to be doing the uh, fireworks. If you notice. Uh, we have a new block here that we're going to be working with. A couple of new blocks. We haven't used the multiplication yet. Um, so we have a 4i equals 0 to 2 uh, repeat that we're using. And our go to xy or go to x. We're, we're using a couple of these, I guess. Um, so these are the ones that we're going to be using for the fireworks that we are going to be creating. Let me see if this plays. Nope, that doesn't play. All right. Um, now it talks about understanding the skeleton. So we've got the blocks that are now put together and we're looking at the for loop. And what the for loop does is that the for loop will go through um, as many times as I. So it's going to loop through um, I times I. Uh, from zero to two. So you put your, your your zero is where I starts and two is where this particular I will end, okay? As we're going through, we've got our four, we've, we're going then to our X, uh, zero, Y zero, so we're going to the middle of the screen with that sprite. And then we're gonna repeat for 15 times, we're gonna repeat something. And then we're going to move I times 15. So if uh, we're, we're doing I and it's starting as one or as zero, right? And zero times 15, it's not gonna move anywhere. Um, it's ever, well, it will. It'll move this 10 steps as you get down, but it won't move anywhere here, all right? And let's see, the go-to block is the center of the firework. And you're gonna repeat the block for however many spikes you want the firework to work, okay? So let's go ahead, we've looked at it, we've read through it. Let's see what it does. Okay, that is the firework running. There it is. Hopefully you saw that. Did you all see that? Okay. Um, so we've got, um, let's go ahead and create this. Let's go ahead and create this code. Let's go ahead and I don't think it told us to do anything other than, did I skip a block? Activity fireworks, nope. Going into activity, we're going to uh, look at the firework. So let's go ahead and create this code. We are creating this skeleton. So you want to open up a new snap. To open up a new snap, you can click on the little file tab here, and you can click new. Make sure you have saved your old one if you're doing it this way. I'm not going to save my old one because I don't want to redo this that project, okay? So go ahead and click new and get your get it open. Make sure you're logged in so you can do your saving. And let's go ahead and create this code. So take the time to create that code.
Everybody get that? I'm struggling with how do I get my I. It gives me, when I right click I, it says help rename and rename all. Okay. I just want to get my variable I so I can drop just, it in. Just just take it. So you see, um, if you're looking at the code, you'll see in the for loop that there's mm -hmm. kind of a, a border around this I. That means you mm -hmm. can take this I and you can make oh, one. just drag it mm -hmm. and you can okay. rename it to whatever you want mm -hmm. but it will act the same as long as it's got that border around it okay so if i have two for loops do i need to name my next one j or is this one that just local to this or that's a good question i would rename it um all right, that's Maybe fine. We're doing a second for loop for the repeat fifteen. Right, or at and in if there's another function somewhere, and I I'm would, using the counter as well, I'll rename it. I'll just tell them to rename it. That's it, what I do anyway. It's better to <laughs> rename it. Okay. Better practice to rename it, and um, I yeah, <laughs> I I would tell them to rename it. Again, Martin, our variables have, is where the code gets broken most of the time. I have the same uh, script on my screen that you've written, but when I run it, I don't get the concentric circles. It doesn't seem to increment for I from zero to one to two. It just gives me one um, set of um, lines. The at at the level of two steps. Yeah, okay. So this is a great time when I think maybe I will stop my share and have you share your screen. Okay. Let's take a look at your code so we can pair program. Okay. Okay. okay so it's this one up here. Mm -hmm. And if I clear it, you can see for I equals zero to two go back to the center, repeat 15 times. So, so you're repeating, you're repeating outside of the four block? Mm -hmm. Your four block is the only time, the only thing it's doing in the four block is going to um, zero X and uh, zero Y. Okay, so take a look at the code and see how the repeat block is nested inside the for block. Yes. If you were to take your repeat block and click it to the go inside the for block, that, no, oh, no, no, down a little, to the go. Click it to the go. There you go. Now see if you can click on that and it works. Beautiful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And so that's why we program together is because when we have little problems, because that was not a huge problem, right? It was almost like missing a period in Java, which is huge. Um, but when um, when you're working together, you can see where uh, different things might come up. Uh, 
All right, so let me get back to the share screen. All right. All right, so we have our uh, our skeleton and we understand our skeleton a little bit. Um, right, and also that's great that you put that in the uh, chat, uh, Camilla, because what, um, what you've got is Michael went ahead and he said, I have a problem. And then somebody else had that same exact problem. And so it's really great to, um, to talk about these things because then that lets everybody know my code's not working, it failed. Well, code fails frequently, right? It's fine, it's good. How do we make it work? Let's go problem solve. And that's what we did. Great job. All right. We've gone through it, we've looked at it. Um, Oh, so we do have our two movements, actually, because we have our small movement and then we have our large movement. So let's go in here. So we're going to understand the movement of I equals zero. And that was what this video is. So that's that small little back and forth. That's the inside of our firework for when I is uh, equal to zero. And then as it goes up to the next level, we will come back here. It goes to one. It's gonna do that next spot, right? So here's my one. And this is it. This is what one does without doing zero. And this is what one does when you have the zero in and then the one it iterates through that that other that next time. All right. How do you clear the um the white space that's drawing? Like because I've got a wrong one. And then now it's just going over and over and over and over and I can't clear it. Okay, so what we can do is we will do our, um, we'll go to oh, our, go to pin and clear. Go ahead and drag clear out into mm -hmm. your box um, and keep okay. that. You could click clear in there. That's um, cool. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And you don't want to put clear inside your for loop because if you put clear inside this for loop, every time you go through it, it's going to clear it, right? So our clear, we want outside. How about we do that? We don't want to put it at the end. If we put it at the end, it goes away right away. So there we go. that's just a good way to, to kind of clear it. All right. Save your code. Save your code. I would call it firework or something. All right, so now we're going to go into our next activity. Ooh, we're going to have random fireworks. So you can keep your code open. And now we're going to make some random fireworks. So we're going to randomize the pin color um, and note the color of the blocks. And we have kind of a greenish color and then a brighter green color. And those are two different palettes that we're going to be working with. OK. We're going to change the pin hue blocks. And we're going to um, pick a random number to what those blocks are going to look like whenever we we are we don't really want to know what our output is going to be. Okay. We will initially set the color. All right. So it says previously the center point for the firework was zero zero. So we're going to randomize the color. Let's go ahead and randomize the color first. Let's go ahead and get that part done. And then we'll come in and we'll randomize the position of where we're going to put our firework. Okay. And now I might not want to clear everything because I might want fireworks all over the page. So I am going to unhook my clear from my firework. And it said we want to randomize the pin color. We want to change the pin color. So let's take a look at that. We're looking for the set pin color to and then change pin hue. And we've got a couple of blocks here, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull my blocks out. I'm just going to get my blocks ready. I got this block and I've got this block. Oh, good. They're together. Okay. So I have that. 
And it looked like I needed something else from my operators. I needed that random. So let's get a random. So those are the three blocks I need here. Set pin color two, change pin hue by, and pick random zero to 250, okay? Zero to 250. Let's go ahead and do that. So where would we put this in to randomize the um, colors more? Are we trying to randomize each stripe or each full firework? Yeah, so that's the, um, that's the question. If we were doing each full firework, where would we put it? Outside the big loop. Outside the, the repeat beginning. loop or the big uh -uh. Uh -uh. So I put it in here, right? Or I not? would put it. Outside here? Um. Yeah, because that's a whole. Okay, cool. So that's then, a red one. And then I don't know what color it changed to. It looked like it changed to like. Greenish. A, yeah, kind of hard to, hard to tell. And uh, uh, here's the other thing. I'm not clearing it each time. So now it's layering it over and over and over, right? Okay, so if we do that, that'll be the single color to it. If we put it on the inside of our for loop, let me go ahead and clear and let's see what it'll do on the inside. So if I put it on the inside, uh, in the for loop area, it gives me different colors for each time it goes through the one to the zero to two. Okay. If I put it, let me see if I can get this unclicked. Sometimes I scare myself when I do this because it gets to be messy. If I put it here, it'll randomize the color even more. So it's your choice where you want to put the random color. In fact, you can put it everywhere if you want. I'm going to put mine on the outside of this. So I'll put it back into the for loop. So now I have each layer will be a different color. Time it runs. Okay. What, weren't we supposed to do multiple fireworks or, or am I not? Did I misread? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to get there in just a second. Oh. So now we're going to say, how do we, we want to we want to put multiple fireworks in and we want to do it in random places on the screen right so you see where we've got our pick random um and now we're going to randomize the location of our fireworks and we have our uh, x zero y zero so we're constantly going to zero zero we have our standard size here is uh 480 by 360 um, and we want the fireworks to be completely on the stage. So they're suggesting that we do negative 200 to 200 for X, and the Y range should be anywhere from 50 to 150. We don't have to give the, these numbers to students. We can just have them test it until they can figure out the numbers, but it's a little faster, so let's go ahead and do that. It says, since we need to reuse the uh, X, Y values, we will, um, X and Y values, we will also need to make an X and a Y variable. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward to see if we've got the code for it. All right, so when it talks about X, Y variables, this is what we're gonna be doing here. I don't wanna work too hard. I don't wanna you know, get too um, logged down and try to figure out how to do something when we're just working with trying to, to make it work and make it uh, and use it, okay? So this is what we're gonna be doing and it says set an X and set a Y. And we want those to be randomized and we have our numbers. So let's go ahead and go get our code. And uh, there are variables that we're making, right? The set X and we'll need two of them. So I'm gonna pull two sets out. I haven't created them yet, so I need to make a variable. 
you need to make an uh, X variable. Um, and when you click on make a variable right here, it's going to give you a variable name. There's your X. It's going to put it up here. I don't want to see it, right? If I don't want to see it, I click the little box and that'll take it away. I got to make another variable. Make your Y variable. I don't want to see that one either. It's just cluttering up my screen. Okay, I'm going to set my Y and I'm going to set my X. So right now, I've got zero, 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 zero. Everything sets to zero. So if I did X, Y, it would automatically be set to zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we want to do. We've created our set pin color. Um, we're changing the pin hue. They do have it outside. I like mine on the inside because I like my things a little bit more colorful. I like, you know, um, all different kinds of colors. So, Lorne, how did you get mine. the X and Y variables off the screen again? Um, what did you click X on? X and Y variables we created. Hang on a second. So when we created that, um, I did, I clicked make a variable and I just named my variable X with the, and then you pull out your set variable and your drop down. you can choose. Once you've created the variable, you can choose what variable you're setting. No, my question, I'm sorry, was it appeared on the stage and you were able to oh. click on something and get rid of it. So it's, yeah. There's two little check boxes here. You un uncheck it and it'll hide the um, hide the variable. Where, where's the checkbox? It's right here on the side of the variable in the um, in the palette area where your X and Y is in, in the palette. You'll see there's a tiny little checkbox. All I'm the way over not... to. So if you go all the way over to the left as you're looking at your screen and you go to where your variables are, there's two little gray squares. There should be a gray square right next to your variable. Nope. Can I share screens? You sure can. Hang on just a second. Let me stop my share. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so all the way over on the left-hand side of the screen in your palette area, where your um, where your blocks are, all the blocks, where all the blocks are, all the way over to the left. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There's your... Ah, button. right here? Yep. And so oh, you, I see. You click I them, see. Mm -hmm, they'll go ah, away. Fantastic. Okay. And that's Thank really you. important to know. So um, when you're, we're going to be working with some other things, that's important to know. Like if you want to know where your mouse is and everything like that, you can uh, click show mouse and it'll show it up on the screen. So that's really, um, really important to know. Okay, let me get back here. All right. <clears throat> and so we had random. So let's go ahead and get our randoms picked out. Now pick random. Remember that looks, uh, that's in your operators and that's your bright green color. So any, anything kind of mathematical or logical that's gonna be in your operator section. And you can duplicate it so you don't have to go back and forth and back and forth. Now it said our X was supposed to be, I think, negative 200 and to 200. I think that was going to be what it was. So that's the um, range that we want to use for our X. And that'll be um, from uh, right to left. And our Y is 50 to 50, the negative 50 to 50? Uh, I read it 50 to 150 because they're trying to get it in the sky, I think. 50 to 150. Okay, yeah. 50 to 150? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, that keeps it up, up higher on the screen. Okay, there we go. And we are going to put, um, we're going to click it right here. Now, uh, 
we don't have, you see where we have the eye and we have that big circle around the eye? We can't do that with the uh, variables that we've created. So we actually have to go and grab them from here. And this is our X. So we're gonna set X to that and we're gonna set Y to that. And do we have to do it at the bottom? What happens if we don't? Let's check and see what happens if we don't. Now we got some random stuff up here. Okay, so we do, we have to, um, we have to put it down here as well. All right, and you can duplicate or you can click and drag. Let's see. So here's my next question. How do I get it to, um, how do I get it to give me 15 fireworks without resetting it? What would I put around this whole thing? I repeat 15. Mm -hmm. I repeat 15. And this is just me being, I don't, I'm getting tired of clicking. <laughs> so if you do this and you make sure your clear is outside the box here because you don't want it to clear every time. I did 10 instead of 15, but now I have some fireworks. There we go. How's everybody doing? Mm, you're Yours did 10 or 15? Uh, mine did 10 because I didn't. Okay. I put, I didn't change it. So let me do 15. And so there. <clears throat> Where would be a good place to have our abstraction? That's probably on the next slide before I do that. So let's go, let's go to the next slide. Oh, save your code. Save your code. All right. Is everybody ready to move forward? Mm -hmm. If again, if you are like really ready to be moving, that's uh, that's great. We can we can keep you kind of um, moving forward. Faster if you want, that's okay. Go ahead to the next thing. So this one is actually going to be looking at the backgrounds. Ooh, okay. So yeah, let's, um, we're going to keep the code. We want this code. Uh, we're going to keep it just like it is. And we're going to talk about doing the backgrounds. So when you are on your sprite, let's see, under your stage, you'll, you will have, uh, You'll have your three buttons for all of your sprites. Yeah, let's do let's do this here. Um, so on our stage, if we we look at this, you have add new sprite, uh, paint a new sprite, or uh, take a camera snapshot and import it as a new sprite. There are different ways where you can have uh, diff your sprites look like different things. But right now we are just looking at the sprite button. And it says, we've got the paint. We talked about that. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the other thing is our backgrounds. Um, so if we were to go onto our stage, now we have two places where the, with the sprite, we can, we have costumes. So before we click on the stage, make sure you're on your sprite, you'll see script, uh, costumes, and sounds. Okay. Let me see. Scripts, costumes, and sounds. You see that? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So when we click on our stage, we see scripts, backgrounds, and sounds. Because your stage is in the background, it's called the background. Um, and so we have some prepackaged stuff. So let's take a look. 
Um, right now the stage is empty, so you have empty and then you can paint it and you can do an image, um, whatever you would like with the backgrounds. So now we want the fireworks in the city sky. So we know where the backgrounds are, we know where the costumes are. Um, we want to um, get a picture. So what do we need to add? From the picture we want to make, you've uh, learned how to make fireworks, but how can we make a night sky and how about stars? Do we want to code all that? Maybe we do. Oh, it says make a scar, a star. Okay, great. So now it's talking about uh, us wanting to to make the scar, star, not scar, star. And it says, uh, remember how we made uh, different shapes yesterday? Well, we actually made one shape yesterday. We didn't do a second shape, but we can look at how we would uh, do these stars if, um, for, for our code. So you're gonna need to set a pen color to yellow and then you're gonna put your pen down. You're gonna draw your five lines to make the star and then you're gonna pick up the pen. Okay, the star has been made larger for the picture. Yours can be 10 steps. So let's think about how we would make a star. And we're still in our, um, our code and we want to make the star. Can we make the star in the background? I don't know, let's take a look. Notice when you're on your stage, you don't have some blocks, like I don't have any motion for my stage, okay? So I can't, I can't make the stars happen on the stage. I have to, it just has to be on the stage. It can't be as a part of the stage, it can't be part of the background. There are several different ways to get a cityscape, and I'm going to tell you one about your backgrounds. If you click on backgrounds, and you come over to your little file tab, and you come down to backgrounds, you can you can pick a city, and you can import a city. But this one, oh my, I said this one already has fireworks in it. Those are my fireworks. <laughs> okay, those are my fireworks. Um, you can you can select something else. I can have fireworks in the desert. Okay, so you have some ways that you can do it in the city. You can have it over the playground. Oh, that's really hard to see, isn't it? I think desert is the best. It's easier to see it in the desert. Okay, so that's how you can just to have a background. Now you can go get a night sky image and bring that in to your background. And then you can have the stars go in the night sky. Or um, right here, it wants us to actually create our stars. Okay, so we're going to make our stars. Let's see. If we have this. We're going to make um, our stars. And it says we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to create these um, stars here. So let's go ahead and use this code and get this uh, code created. I'm going to Is leave this it on the background? This would be um, actually in your, um, this would actually be in your, um, one of your sprites. So you can create a new sprite. Let's do that. We're going to create a new sprite, and we're going to code that new sprite. Okay, and make sure when you create a new sprite, you have moved it over to scripts because your sprite is going to um, be a new script. I want my sprite to be yellow. Can I be yellow? Okay. No? Oop. I didn't want that, so I'm going to delete that. Why my sprites are just brown, I don't know. I've got two. They're different browns, I guess. So sprite two, you got sprite one, and I'm going to call, I, I can name my sprites. So with this particular sprite here, I'm going to come up to the box and I'm going to name it Firework. How are you? Sprite two, you can, oh. Oh, can you rename here? It's no. not letting me rename them. So if you, go up to, if you go up to the gray oh. box, once you've clicked okay. on the sprite, you go up to the gray box. Mm -hmm. And you just delete the name. And this one is going to be stars. Okay. The gray box up here will allow you to name your sprite. 
Notice I have code in my firework, no code in my stars. Now we're going to code our stars. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. On your firework, all of that code that's in fire, the firework sprite, can you name that a block? You can. You Possibly. Can. And then call it later? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So what um what Heather was asking, can I name it a block? Yes, you can. And let's we did a block before, right? Um with a block, you can come all the way down to the bottom of your code and you know click make a block. Personally, I will right click, make a block, right click as your friend. This is a firework and it's gonna do some motion, so likely they would want it to be in motion. I would prefer other. I like to keep mine in gray because I know exactly where those are. Um, they live in one place. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and this is gonna be my firework. Okay, and it is a command. We're not reporting anything, we're doing something. It's command, you're gonna do this. It's not a predicate, so it's not a Boolean, it's not making, it's not, you know, it's not true, false. It's do this thing. Okay, so that's what we've got here. And then we're going to click OK. But now um, are we getting that for all sprites? Uh, this will be for all sprites. Okay. Um, you could make it for just one sprite, but I think this is fine for all sprites. Um, we'll keep the clear on the, the outside. And because I've well, we'll keep the clear and repeat. I'm going to take everything other than the uh, repeat 15 times. I'm just going to do fireworks. This is just fireworks. Where, did your set pin color go away? It's inside my, um, I put it inside. You could keep that outside if you wanted, oh, but I could. kept it inside the fireworks. Okay, so everything but the repeat 15. Okay, because, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, got it. And then apply and then okay. Okay. Now that goes in now, there. remember I made it blue, so it's going to be in motion. And I'm going to scroll all the way down, and there it is. If I can't find it, there's a little um, search thing here, and I can type in firework. And it'll show me. And then I can just click this here. <clears throat> Amazing, right? So much cleaner. You know that this is going to be fireworks. Actually, it's a firework, so I'm going to edit my name um, because it's just one firework. Mm. And it's good to, to make sure you're naming your stuff the way it is so that you know, okay, this is a firework, and if I repeat it 15 times, then I'll get 15 fireworks. And it does the same thing and it's running through all the code and you just can't, you can't see it running through the code, but it's doing its stuff. Now, how did you get your fireworks on when you were on the city? They were all behind the buildings. Oh, it's just how it looked. It's just how it, it appeared. It's actually on top of the screen. Oh. It's everything's on front and you can send stuff back and move things around. If you wanted to change how things look, um, you can come to the looks and you can tell it to go to the front layer, to go um, to the back layer. But the layers are not, it's, I don't think it's, I'm not sure how the backgrounds work with the layers. You'd have to add that. You'd have to add multiple and then clear the sky, I think. Probably. To make layers. Yeah. Probably. So you can. I've never done it. it yeah, you, you can get in and experiment. The great thing about Snap is, guess what? You're not going to break it. And if you do, call Yens. <laughs> um, so, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and get our Make a Star solution. Let's see. We've got the Make a Star. We already did all that. Oh, we're no, this is the make a star solution. Let's go ahead and get that. So we're going to set our color, pin down, repeat, and we're going to do all of this stuff. So let me go ahead and get in here and let's do that. 
Y'all are stretching my brain trying to remember everything. I know we've got to repeat, so I'm going to grab that. Um, we got a pen. That's pink color. I think we're going to do that pink color to yellow. Um, oh, that's green. Yellow. Where am I creating this script? Am I creating a script in the back? Grant on the background on the state. I don't know. I don't even know if I know my question. Sure. I'm actually you're supposed to be creating your script in your stars, and I put it in the fireworks. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, so you're gonna click on your star sprite that you created, which you can create just by adding a new sprite and then renaming it. Okay. Okay, and then you're gonna you're gonna actually um, put everything in the star sprite. I put it in the wrong spot. Um, so now I'm going to go back and get everything together. I know we have some motion. I know we have some turning. What else do I have? Let me go back here. Uh, the go to XY, pin down, pin up. Okay. We're going to go to XY, and then we have a pin down and a pin up. Pin down. And we also have the random because we want the stars to be random as well. And that's an operator. So we'll get our Rick pick random. I need to. And to change your color, you just click on the box and then go in to change the color to what you want. All right, so it says negative 200 to 100, and then uh, pick random 50 to 180 for our star solution. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and it's telling us to repeat it five times, move 10 steps, and turn 144 degrees. Aw, it's a cute little star. It's little. Make it 50 steps. To see it, yeah. I'm going to change my costume, too. Uh, to nothing, too. Oh, my background. I'm going to change my background to nothing. Okay. Ooh, you can't really see. You still can't really see. I'm going to change my star to bigger. Okay, my fireworks are going to be some different colors. Let's get that a different color. Okay. Is the scene the same as a background, a stage? <clears throat> the scene. Oh, never mind. I already answered my own question. You got it? I think. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Whatever. It's beyond the scope of I'm gonna, this lesson. I'm going to make my background a different color because I can't see any of the yellow. So I'm going to go to my stage and I'm going to set my stage for black. Can I make it black? Okay. 
Okay, I went and I did a fill bucket and I made it black. Oh, that's that's better. Okay. Where'd my script go? Oh, jeez. Oh, that's why. Okay, now now we may want to put like a control on it so when the sprite uh, when it's clicked, it's going to start doing its things. Right. So now when my green flag is clicked, it does its stuff. Oh, it's doing the one thing first to not the other. So I want to do my stars first, right? How many stars do I have? Oh, I only made one star. I need a bunch of stars. Oh, I don't think I did it right. Okay, let's edit that puppy. Because I need to actually switch your location. The problem. Hmm. Okay, so I've added to mine, I've got my stars running, getting your star to work is good. Getting it to go to a random location is good. If you look at my code, I've repeated my star 10 times and I've done this when on click, um, when the green flag is clicked. Um, now what I could do to get my fireworks and my stars to go at different times is I could add another thing to my stuff, which would make my stars go first and then tell my fireworks to go, okay? So to do that, I could go to here and get a broadcast and create a broadcast. I have to create a new broadcast and I would do fireworks. So then it could broadcast to fireworks. I got my new name. It's going to broadcast to the fireworks once it's all done. And when I broadcast to fireworks, I could go to fireworks. And instead of green flag, I could do when I receive fireworks. You don't have to do this. This is just a way. So I click my green flag. Oh, 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 I don't want to clear. Oh my goodness, that caused so many problems. So I, I had a problem. All my stars went away because I didn't do it right. Now I've got my stars and now I have my fireworks and my stars. What's the other thing that would be really good to go away? My turtles are all over the place, right? I can hide my turtles. If I go to looks, I've got hide. And I can hide my turtle. And I can do the same thing for my other turtle. They've got show and hide buttons. And I can hide them. The code will still work. So if I click the green flag, now you don't see my turtles. Now you just see the fireworks happening and the stars. This is just for aesthetics. That's not, you don't have to do that. That's just to make it more pleasing to the eye. How are we? Are we okay? Do you put hide anywhere? So like hide isn't attached. 
Yeah, you can put it. You but can. It, you can put. You don't have to attach it. You don't have to. You can actually just put it right up here in the um, when the green flag is clicked. Uh huh. And um. And you may want to do a green flag on this one as well, right? So anytime the green flag is clicked, it's going to make sure both of them are hidden. Okay, so my broadcast went away. So <clears throat> how do I get the down arrow to have a broadcast? I hit new. Yeah. So if you have your broadcast and you're doing a broadcast, first you have to create it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can just uh -huh. click new. Uh huh. And then type whatever you want in. So when you click new, you type a message in. Okay. And so now I've got. Oh no, that's not what I want. Yeah, I do. I think. And then I got to go receive it. When I receive, make. All right. Now let's see what happens. So let me go right, back. I want to make working. sure that I haven't lost everybody. This code right here for making a star, this is all you need. All you need to make the star is right here. Okay. All you need to do is to make the stars right here. I got stuck. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make my background dark or my stage dark. Sure, let's go ahead and let me stop share and you bring your computer on screen. Okay. okay. So um, in your, okay, so you actually have a, a where it says untitled um, on your, uh, on your um, stage background area where you're at, if you click the dark box. Okay. Click it. No, it didn't do anything? No. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to the, go back to empty where it says empty um, on your stage. Okay, yeah. I clicked on that. Uh, click on the, uh, there is a, uh, the brush. Yes. Okay. See the fill box? Um, this, this one. Yeah. Okay. Now click your background area, the paint editor. Edi no, go to the paint editor area. Yep. That. that okay. Was I guess that was the step I was missing. Okay. Click okay. All right. Now you have untitled and now you've got your stars. Okay. Good. Thank you. You are so welcome. Okay, so with the slides, when you're looking at the slides, this is note that you will, you will only go, like, you're only going um, as far as you need to is what's going to be on the slides. If you do a little bit more, that's okay. Not a problem. All right, so now we've got some experimenting time. We can make some skyscrapers. We can go back and, and uh, use some of our blocks to make some things. Um, we don't have to. The main thing we did was our stars and our um, fireworks, but you can go play with it and you can make more. We have some making the blocks. We drew a square. Um, we've got a triangle. Um, so we have that. I can show you real quick and let me see. Okay, yeah, we're done with this quest. I'll show you really, really super fast how to do a square and a, a triangle. Well, we've made the, that's a rectangle, but I'll show you um, how we can make some of those changes with our draw square. So we have done the draw square um, activity and we can use the draw square in here, anywhere. Um, we can make new sprites that draw square or we can just do a draw square with whatever sprites we have. I'm going to go ahead and make a new sprite. I'll put our draw square in. We remember we had our um, 
I'll just do when I'm not going to worry about making the code yet. Um, I am going to make the code, but our, our squares, we're going to re repeat a number of times and we are going to move. So we'll get our motion out, move 10, turn, we'll do this 90, uh, we'll move 50 and turn 90. And this is, uh, this is our square, right? And our square repeats four times. Um, but what we can do with this is we can create a block that's our draw square. And um, we can have that block. I'm, I'm making this, I'll, I'll keep it in motion, that'll be fine. Um, and we can, we can put into our draw square, we'll just put this in here. If we wanted to change the height or anything like that, we could change the number of steps in between. So we could do move 50, uh, turn 90, and then um, repeat this twice instead of four times. That's how it was for the, uh, that's how it, for the um, height, we're gonna have to change it just two times. So we're gonna have two things twice. All right, so we are gonna take this and How did you get the plus draw plus square, the purple block that's up in that hat? How? I missed that part. Oh, right here? So if you right click and make a block. Yeah. Put draw square. And you can choose whatever color you want. And then once you do okay. that and you press OK, it's going to give you draw plus square. And I'm... I don't have those choices. Okay. I've so, got extract, okay. delete, add, comment, a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, right click. I got lost. <laughs> are you on the stage or are you on the sprite? You have to be on a sprite. I'm on a sprite. I'm on a sprite. And oh, make right, a block. Okay. Right click, make a block, or uh -huh. Uh -huh. go down to the bottom and you get your block there. And I'm making a square. Mm-hmm. And we got to do a pin up, pin down, remember? Yeah, but it doesn't have the purple. Are you talking about the, oh, the color? Okay, so when you are, when you do a right click, make a block, you actually have to select which one you want. Oh. Motion, looks, um, command. Make a block, motion. You can leave it gray. Uh -huh. If you have a gray block, it will always live under variables at the very bottom. Okay. Okay. And I know we're going a little bit over time. Is everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can, be, I can be here for you as long as you need me to today. All right, and when we click apply, this block should show up. I've got the blue. I put it in blue, so it should show up there, and I should be able to draw a square. So for I didn't put, I put pin up. Pin down, pin. I'll put it in here. Pin up there, and pin down here. Let me see if this will work. Oh, good. I've got a, I got a rectangle. It actually worked. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. So I drew a rect, uh, I drew a rectangle instead of a square because I used this, um, the second move block. It's okay if you just have squares. And then you just have houses, and that's fine too. We'll just make a draw square because it, it is a square, and I should just have draw square. All right, good. All right. And if we can draw a square, we can draw something else and we can make a triangle. So let's, we're going to go and we'll make a triangle again. 
or a triangle. Okay, and we're going to make a triangle. And how many times do we repeat for a triangle? We have how many sides? Three, three sides. Okay, so we're going to repeat the triangle three sides. Now, if I move three sides and I do 90 degrees, is that going to do anything for me? It's going to give me a three-sided weird looking thing, right? Good gracious, I don't even know where my stuff is. So I got to do a pin up and then. <gasps> and then. Up. Okay, so now it's making this weird square thing that's not right because my angles aren't right. So I don't like doing math. I'd rather the computer do math for me. So I'm going to make it do my math. I know a circle is 360 and all shapes are based on circles here. So my 360 thing, and I'm going to divide that. Oops, got to divide it by three. Not multiply it. I got to divide it by 360 divided by three. That's how many degrees. Thank goodness I don't have to do the math. Okay, so I don't have the roof in the right place. I'll have to move things around and I'll have to play with it. But I have this and I know that my stars can do their thing. I know my fireworks can do their thing. And I have a draw square and a draw triangle. And it's doing its stuff. So I can build houses in here and do those kinds of things with it now that I have my stuff. And now it's time to just play with it and see how you can get the roof on top of the house. And the roof the same size as the house. How are we doing? Is everybody okay? If you don't quite get this part, okay, that's okay. Just know that we're gonna come back to this and we're gonna look at this again. All right. <laughs> Trouble drawing a, tr a square. <laughs> uh. Okay. So we do have a section three, but I think we've got it very well laid out. If you want to do it, do a little bit of section three together, that's fine. If you um, are good, we can kind of give this section three to you as something that you can kind of play with a little bit more. So tell me what you would like. I think it, this comes down to um, the Excite teachers. We can take you through Section 3. Section 3 has got two components to it. And um, we could take you through the beginning of Section 3. Or alternatively, um, we could leave it, that as something that you complete, um, you know, at your own leisure. And then when you finish, just send us a link to the share. Just share the project with us so we can um, get a feeling for, you know, your successes. But uh, it's really your call. So um, I don't know, Tracy, Heather, um, Trey, uh, what, what's your thoughts? Did you want to continue on or um, would you like to? Well, in fact, I tell you what, Marnie, if you just introduce Section 3 and then I think they the said, teachers would. They're actually uh going in the uh, chat right now, share it, and we can complete it. I will give you, um, I'm going to give you the code here. Got it. Got um, it. Then to the section three, I'll sh make sure that everybody has access. Perfect. Before we leave, go ahead and have, go ahead and check to make sure the link works for you. And section yes. three, um, again, You've got stuff in here where it says if there's time, that means these other things you don't have to do. All right. And it's very step-by-step. Uh, step. 
as well. If you get stuck, just reach out. Just reach out to me or Tony um, or Matt, and we we can help you. We can help you. Um, it does have check your answers, so it does eventually get you the, to the code that you need. Um, and the one thing I do want to talk about this one that's good for you, I believe this one has a list in it. Yes. This one will be working with lists, and I will tell you that that is a big part of the AP Computer Science Principles exam. So just even looking at them and seeing how they work a little bit will be good for you to do uh, before the PD, especially if you're really new with code. Um, lists aren't scary. You just have to know how to step through them. <laughs> Reboot your brain. I love it. Me too. <laughs> So you have section one, you have section two, and now you have section three here. This is for you. Um, and if there's something that you don't understand, it's absolutely okay to reach out and get that understanding. So I have a teacher question. Um, these lessons for the, these aren't lessons for the students, right? Or they're lessons sort of for the students? I mean, you can use them. But right, so at the beginning of the school year, how how many days before you get, you actually get your your stuff set, right? Right. Um, okay. Usually, it's but they come in this kind of a format. Uh, is that what it is? Actually, a little more self discovery, uh, a little bit more. It's a little more discovery. This is more step by step. Your first unit okay. will be very step okay. by step. Your second unit will okay. go right into now. It's time. Now it's time for you to step up your game now that you've learned the pieces. Okay. Do we have access to the first two sections as the first two slideshows as well? So like if some stuff went a little too fast for me and I want to go back yeah. and play, do yeah. it. Do you want me to do you want me to re-put those in? Or um Tony, can you when you share out the um uh the email can you do an email with the the links to each section to absolutely us? absolutely yes yeah okay. and that way some of the um the some of the others that weren't able to be here they they'll be able to get that as well sure marty when tr when you worked with tracy to show her how to color the background somehow i wasn't able to to follow that or do it um can i share screens one more time Sure. Okay, so here, here it is. So and you see where all the untitled are? Yeah. Just click on one of those. Go down. Right here. Go, no, no, down, 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 down. Click on that. One of them. Click on it. There you go. Right click. Click edit. Okay. So now what uh, we, to get the black screen, you see the bucket that's tilting over? The bucket, and your little, this one? yep, that one. Okay. That's gonna fill everything. So if you don't have a shape, uh, click that, then you go inside. You can see the color selected and the, the, the bar below you, and that is uh, currently black. So go ahead and, yep, you see there? Now go into your, um, where all the checkerboard is. Here? All the way over, all the way over, into the big paint area. Right click, or just click, uh, just click in it. Yeah, there you go. I see. So it's this guy here mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. needs to be done. All right. Thanks for your everyone's indulgence. That's absolutely okay. Cool. All right. Well, I... I think everyone um, that the consensus seems to be uh, people would like to do section three um, independently. Um, it'll take a day or two for all of the recordings to come through from um, Zoom. What I might do is just uh, do an email to the people who attended today so that you at least have got those links. I did put them both in the uh, chat. So section one and section two are in the chat. I also put Marnie's and my email address in there. You probably got them, but they're, at least they're there uh, easy for you to see. And as you work your way through section three, um, 
Mar as Marnie mentioned, if you have any questions or any concerns, let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to help. We can set up a, an instant Zoom meeting um, if it helps, or we can try uh, via email. But uh, please be assured that you know we will uh, assist you as as much as we possibly can as you work through um, the, uh, the those section three. So, have you enjoyed today? <laughs> thank you, Heather. Cool. Well, thank you, um, Marnie. As always, has done a wonderful job. Um, she has many years of experience uh, of teaching um, SNAP, and uh, it's always a pleasure working with Marnie. She's very, very good at being able to explain things in a very understandable way. So thank you, Marnie, for all of your efforts. Thank you, Matt, for being along. We haven't drawn on your uh, skills today. We will in um, the next uh, the next round, but thank you for being here. Um, we appreciate you being on standby. Uh, if, we, if we'd if we had breakout rooms, we wanted to have enough um, lead teachers so that we could actually have somebody in the breakout rooms to help you. But uh, today we didn't seem to need them, so that all worked out very well. Anyway, in the meantime, um, thank you all for making time to join us. Um, it's been uh, great seeing you and chatting with you during uh, this morning. Um, all that's left now is to, you know, um, hope that you can enjoy the rest of your day um, and the rest of your weekend. And uh, I'll get all the information out, out, out to you as soon as I possibly can. So anyway, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marnie. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mike. Good seeing everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye now. <laughs> thank you.